Hey guys, Kyle the Death Knight of Anime here, bringing you my review for One Piece episode 823. And the episode immediately starts off by showing Bobbin's bounty of 105 million and 500,000 berries. And I do kind of like how One Piece is starting to mix is starting to, is starting to, is starting to mix it up a little bit with the bounties because most of the time a bounty only has a solid uh, has only has a solid number in the millions. But but that thousands area is always left alone. But even more is what we learned that Bobbin has the power of hypnotizing people, which honestly, like I'm, I, I've I've paid enough enough attention to One Piece, and I know that it, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't have come up unless uh, un, 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 unless something like that even even served a purpose. So if I if if I had to get take a guess as as, as to where the as to where something like that might come up again is is is, is is I'm, I'm thinking it, thinking that Bobbin's hypnotizing powers is, is probably going to come into play around, say, the time of or, or, or around say the, the, the time of the of the wedding action of the wedding tea party action 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 which starts taking place, and I imagine he's going to use that power in order to in order to either in order, in order to knock out in order to knock out the Vin smokes and make them easier to kill, but. I like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just curious as, as to particularly where, 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 as to where a power like that might even come in handy, or actually even a power like that would even come in handy in, in the, in the, in the climax of, of this arc. So, but yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, a very curious thing, thing that that Bobbin has the, the ability to hypnotize people. But I think even more so though. For, as far as Bobbin's bounty, though, it, it really makes it as weird as it sounds. It really makes me wonder, as as as, as particularly as, as as to pretty much how like I, I want like okay, we we've definitely learned this power, but it really makes me curious as, as to how dangerous that how, how dangerous Bobbin himself as a character is because well, I mean, considering he he pretty much got I mean, considering he he pretty much got kicked he pretty much got kicked in he, he got kicked by. He got kicked by Sanji and, and and just barely survived. It just makes me wonder how how strong he is, though, because if he was able to get kicked by Sanji and survive, like it, it does show how sturdy is. But how powerful does is Bobbin himself? I want to know because he hasn't. Bobbin just kind of has kind of been in the background. He hasn't been that character that, that really has done anything. So it's almost like I, I in order for in order for me, in order, it's one of those things where in order. It, it, if I'm really gonna believe his bounty, I really want I really want Bobbin to do something good, in order to do something great, in order to do something in order to prove it to me almost. I know a, a weird thing to say, but I I, I really I really want I really want to see exactly what as exactly what what it is what it is that Bobbin as a character can do, and like because if if he doesn't do anything, then I'm just gonna believe he he only got that bounty from. from he only got that bounty from, from, from pretty much only being associated with Big Mom and doesn't deserve any praise whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, Brooke became Big Mom's teddy bear in this chapter, and no lie, that that, that whole transition, that whole transition of, of the big reveal of Big Mom, of of, the, of seeing Big Mom, actually, of seeing Big Mom sleeping, actually made me jump. Like when when the scene transition, when when we see when we see the dark shadows. When we when we see all the dark shadows and when we see the dark shadows that, that that are pretty much covering Big Mom, but only enough that are only enough to illuminate Brooke, I was like, okay, it really drew me in. But 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 when the when the when the shadows finally lifted and real Big Mom was like, oh, like yeah, no, I I literally jumped when 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 the big reveal of Big Mom happened. I don't know why it just it just did. Like I I definitely got to give the animators a toy definitely a little bit of credit for just for how they handle that. How they handled that transition because, yeah, it was it, it actually made me jump. But um, but even more so than that, like Brooke, Brooke, I, I have to ask you right now, Brooke, and answer me truthfully. How can you so willingly sleep soundly, knowing you're being cuddled and, and cuddled up to Big Mom of all people? Like honestly, Brooke. You are a champ for you are a champ for, for pretty much for being for being able to sleep through that shit because if I was in your place, I'd be awake the entire night trying desperately just, just to get out of her fat finger grasp if I was you. It, on, on top of the fact I I'd be scared I I'd be scared shitless to the point where I'd be pissing and shitting myself at the same time. Like 
Seriously, Brooke, how, how, how the hell can you sleep through that? That is big mom you're sleeping with, for God's sakes. Oh God, I just made it sound dirty, but yeah, you, you get the idea. Like, seriously, Brooke, how can you sleep through that? I, did, 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 uh, did, did, from, did, 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 I, I want to say that, 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 that from somewhere off screen, you just kind of accepted his fate of being Big Mom's teddy bear, but seriously, Brooke, how? How? I want to know. Also, no, also, no lie when, when, I, I think, also, no lie when, 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 when you see the Straw Hat, recover, when you see the Straw Hat, Brooke recovery team, uh, basically trying to rescue Brooke, and, and we see, we see, I think it was Diesel and Relay basically attempting to wake Big Mom up. Like I, I legitimately laughed at the point where, where we see where we see where we see, where we see Diesel and Big Mom yelling, "Mama, wake up!" Like when when they were doing that, I I le no I, I legitimately was laughing out loud. Like I was like, <laughs> "Oh god, that yeah, that Diesel and Brulee de definitely made me laugh in this one." Um, in fact, now that I think about it, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys. Well, yes, it is true that this episode didn't have the greatest pacing. And they, and they obviously extended the scenes that, that revolve around the res that the attempts to rescue Brooke in this episode. I, but I legitimately laugh. Everything about this episode legitimately made me laugh all the way through. And I guess that shows that it was a personal preference for me when when watching the uh, when it comes to watching the One Piece anime. I don't really care too much about the pacing. Of an episode, as long as there's something entertaining about it, whether it's whether it has to be that there's something action packed going on, or or just something that's 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 more downright that that's more downright funny and comedic, and and this, and and that definitely and the latter definitely happened in this episode. Actually, if I had to, if I had to give the if you could if I had to give the best description for this episode, is that it had some great comedic action like. It was very one-sided action with with Big Mom and with Big Mom and and Prometheus and Zeus basically just destroying everything in their path, of course. But just it was just seeing it was just seeing the big it was just seeing the the Straw Hats attempts in order to rescue Brooke throughout, and just seeing just seeing them try and fail every time is like yeah that 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 I'll admit that that shit was definitely funny, and but yeah and and uh, and, and yeah just. Just pretty much the, the the whole the whole episode of of comedic, of of how comedic it was was just entertaining to watch, and but but my favorite moment of this episode for me was from which, was from when Brooke finally woke up during Nami's attempts to rescue him, and 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 when he saw his replacement dummy and just freaked the fuck out calling it a ghost I was like seriously, the one like seriously the one thing that ever changes in One Piece is Brooke that is broken and, and just how scared and I was. And how and how I, and and how almost almost I, I, I almost almost his the, the, depending on what he's scared about it, it comes off as, as almost ironic like like the man is a walking talking skeleton and he's scared by the stupidest shit like I I know it's part of the joke but it's just like Brooke you bony sob you are a walking talking skeleton how are you getting scared by a dummy <laughs> it's like again it, it is funny but it's like it's it's one of those things that also makes you question Brooke why are you getting so scared dumbass. Um, also, one thing to note is that, one last thing to note is that even though it was only the last couple minutes of the episode, I really felt for Luffy, I mean, I really felt for Luffy when, when he was trying desperately in order to get back to the, he was trying to get back to the, to the meeting place in order to meet Sanji, I mean, the man finally made it back to the place where he promised to meet Sanji, and then all of a sudden, Counter comes in to block his path, and, and, and beat the ever-living shit out of Luffy, and... What makes it worse is the fact that, 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 that we definitely know exactly how... We definitely know how, that, that Luffy has steadily grown hungrier and hungry, hungrier throughout through, 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 this, this whole entire experience on Whole Cake Island. So, Sanji, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you need to get there fast. Or just, like, at this point, anyone save Luffy. Like, seriously, I just felt so bad for Luffy in this episode. It's just like, yeah, get there now. But, um... Yeah, guys, that's pretty much my review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Death Night of Enemy, signing off. Later, guys.